friends, this eye of a 76 years old lady has cataract with pseudo exfoliation, small pupil and weak genuine. I have taken up this case for surgery. Let us see how the surgery went on. By this time I have made the main incision and here is the side port. The main incision is at around 11 o'clock and this side port it is at around 2 o'clock. Now I am going to stain the anterior capsule underneath this air bubble and here is the tripan blue dye 0.06 percent and here is adrenaline I want to see if the people dilates a bit with the help of intracameral application of adrenaline but in this case adrenaline had no effect now I have decided to make some stab incisions and apply iris hooks as the pupil expansion device in this case. This is the first stab incision at 9.30. This is the second stab incision at 12.30, 3 o'clock hours away and this is the stab incision at 6.30. And this is the last stab incision at 3.30. So, four stab incisions, three clock hours apart and when I will apply the hooks and pull the hooks, the iris will take the shape of a square. Now, see how to apply the hooks. This is the silicone guard. The silicon guard is retracted backward. Now the hook is introduced through a stab incision. The hook is rotated so that we can hook the margin of the people. Now advance the hook so that the iris remain retracted. In this way, this is another hook applied at 12.30 this is the third hook at 9.30 and this is the fourth hook at 3.30. Now pull the hooks and see how much dilatation you can get. So in this case the pupil has been dilated very well. It is about 6.5 millimeter pupil or even may say 7 millimeter people. And now I'm going to do capsulorexis. Now see what happens when I puncture the anterior capsule. Here it is. As I puncture the anterior capsule, see the whole lens moves and there are kings on the anterior capsule. This indicates that the genule is very weak. So, I have to apply a CTR and for that I need some more stain of the anterior capsule. And so, I am painting the capsule underneath this viscoelastic substance. Just over the anterior capsule, I apply the dye. Yes, it is possible to stain the anterior capsule very well just paint the capsule underneath the viscoelastic substance. Now I wash the dye out and here you can see that I have got adequate staining of the anterior capsule and my next step, subsequent steps will be very easy. So I'm washing the ocular surface so for better visibility and now this is viscoelastic substance SPMC and now I take the Eutrita forceps and do the CCC very gently. We cannot pull very fast or we cannot make jerky movements we have to make a very gradual and very gentle movements when 
the genule is weak. That's it. So the CCC is done. It is not a large rexis. If I make a very large rexis, the rexis may run to the periphery and my attempt, my plan to implant a CTR can be, you know, may not be possible. Now I'm doing a little bit of hydro dissection. I do hydrodissection, but I don't rotate the nucleus because rotation of the nucleus may cause some more stress on the genule and some more genular fibers may get torn. Now I'm applying the CTR, capsular tension ring. The leading haptic goes underneath the capsular margin. I can see that and I'm gradually pushing the CTR and as I come near the tailing end I take a Macpherson's forceps. I hold very near to the eyelet, go into the entry chamber, I take a Sinsky hook in my left hand and the prong of the Sinsky hook goes into the eyelet of the tailing end and when I'm very sure I go underneath the rexis margin and release the CTR. Thus the CTR takes its position at the equator of the capsular bag. Now I am very much relieved that the bag is nicely supported and when I will do chopping and emulsification of the fragments the bag will be supported and the remaining genule will not get torn. Now in this case I am going to do a vertical chop. I don't want to go near the rexis margin. What you do is just hold the nucleus, bury the feco, bury the chopper very near to the teeth and chop the nucleus anteroposteriorly. This is vertical chop. Place the chopper very near to the tip of the FACO handpiece and divide the nucleus anteroposteriorly. Now one more thing I am doing is I am keeping the protect to protect the posterior capsule. I am keeping the epinuclear shell intact. I am not emulsifying the epinuclear shell at this moment. So I am with the chopper. I am taking care of the epinuclear shell as I am emulsifying the hard nucleus. See here, I am separating the epinuclear shell from the nucleus and keeping the epinuclear shell like this. It is very prominent. This maneuver is very nicely shown here. I am holding the nucleus. Yes, the epinuclear shell is pushed towards the capsular margin, rexis margin and thus I protect and when the nucleus is removed I go to epinucleus mode and I gently pull the epinucleus and I'm keeping an eye on the posterior capsule how far it is and I can see that it is quite far and thus I'm able this is a nuclear mass nuclear piece 
And this is the last part of the epinucleus. In the past, it has so happened this, I have removed this epinucleus and the posterior capsule came to the aspirating port and PCRN occurred. Just imagine, you have placed RS hooks, you have placed a CTR and now you have a PC rent. You feel so bad. So I'm happy now that PC rent has been prevented rather in this case. And now I inject viscoelastic substance, support the bag and then come out. Now I'm going to remove the cortical matter. Since I have done hydro dissection, removal of this cortical matter is not difficult. I have done some CTR implantation without hydrodissection. In those cases, removal of the cortical matter was a bit clumsy. That's why in this case, I did a bit of hydrodissection and then I implanted the CTR. That's it. The cortical matter has been cleaned removed nicely and I'm very happy that the posterior capsule is very nicely clean. There is no cells on the posterior capsule. Now I inject viscoelastic substance, fill up the entry chamber, fill up the capsular bag and in this case I have selected a hydrophilic acrylic intraocular lens because the patient belongs to economic category. However, this is a very good lens from Apasami Associates. This is NASPRO Hydrophilic Acrylic Aspheric Intraocular Lens. No financial interest, but I am very grateful to Apasami Associates because they have helped me so much in building my practice. And now the lens goes into the capsular bag. Now I have to remove the hooks. Now how to remove the hooks? It is very easy. Just retract the silicon guard, advance the hook, unhook the pupillary margin and remove the hook. You can use any kind of pupil expansion device but this is most widely used in India and it is very economical and you just have to make very small stab incisions say less than one millimeter stab incisions. Now I am irrigating out the viscoelastic substance from the entry chamber and from the capsular bag. Using the irrigating probe of the bimanual IA also for removal of viscoelastic substance. I sweep around the angle to remove the viscoelastic substance. And when the viscoelastic substance is nicely cleaned, I just hydrate the sideboard which is used for the chopper. The stab incisions doesn't need any hydration. Now I go to higher magnification and make a final wash. And see how beautiful the thing looks. It has been completed so patiently and so nicely. And that's it. Just now I just have to hydrate this form the entry chamber and conclude the case. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Thank you very much for your attention.